If you work as a professor or graduate student, you probably spend a lot of time on Google Scholar. And if you'd like to export and analyze the raw data behind Google Scholar, you're going to need a Google Scholar API to pull that data. In this video, I'll show you my top pick for a Google Scholar API and how to access it for scraping data on any domain you're interested in. You'll be able to enter in any Google Scholar search term and get back structured data containing things like the title, publication, snippet, as well as the citation count from the API in JSON format. This is the API here, Google Scholar API from SERP API. This is a third party company not affiliated with Google, nor am I affiliated with SERP API. You can see here, you can enter in any search term and they query Google Scholar on your behalf and extract out the raw data behind the search results page. So you can see an example here where they query their API using a query like biology with an API key. And here's the response JSON. For each result, we get the title, as we can see here, the link to the page, the snippet, which is usually from the abstract taken there, some info about the publication, and some interesting fields like the citation count, basically anything that Google shows us. I'll put a link to this in the description. You can use this free. You get 100 free requests every month from SERP API. Only catch is you have to be technical enough to actually use their API. But if you watch till the end, I'll show you a no-code tool that'll help you use this thing. So you can specify if you want to get the citations for a specific publication, start and end year filters, as well as a few other things like language filters that I'm not gonna to touch on too deeply, but let me know in the comments if you'd like me to. You can also paginate so you can get hundreds of results for any query. If you work in law or in patents, you can specify this search type here. There are a few advanced options where you can select case law and even specify specific courts. I'm not gonna get into that, but again, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to. The best way for you to get started though is to scroll up and click on this link to the playground, which will start doing a live search on Google Scholar for coffee and then show you in real time as it extracts out the data. Pretty cool. So I can see the search term here and I can change this and query the API as well as with all these other parameters so I can understand how these different parameters work and what the response data I'll get back. So here, for example, I can specify a from year. I only want coffee publications from 2021 to 2023 inclusive click this and SERP API will run a live query on Google Scholar and then parse out the results I can see here on the right hand side getting the live structured data. And you can also see it returns the authors as an array. So many papers will have one or more authors. So it's nice to see that data structured out. And here's a citation count as I showed you earlier. You can also get the other versions and then query the API if you wanna see specific versions. So let's get all the citations of this paper. There are 94 other papers that cite this paper. I can put them in cited by, clear all the other options and then I run this query and I'll see all the other papers that cited the coffee paper. So I actually goofed, I should have cleared out the coffee part in the search query because now it actually filtered the citations by the word coffee. So I only got 92 in the response instead of 94. Pro tip, to get as much data as possible, set the number of results to 20. It doesn't cost you any more with your SERP API quotas. It will just take a little bit longer. So if you're trying to build something real time, that may not be a good idea. But if you're trying to scrape data, like I'm gonna show you in the rest of this video, set this to 20. And then to paginate and get the next page of results and so on, you go to the result offset parameter and you increase that by 20 each time. So I start at zero, then I hit 20 to go to the next page, 40, 60, and so on. And I can keep paginating until Google stops giving me results. If you're comfortable working with this JSON, then you don't need to watch the rest of this video. But if you just want an easy way to query this API and download CSV files you can analyze in Excel or upload to a database, watch on. This is my freemium service that queries the Google Scholar API on your behalf and auto magically converts the data into a CSV file. Click the link in the description and you can use it for free and download up to 10 rows of data per day, absolutely free. Here I ran that same query for coffee, but instead of getting a bunch of unusable JSON back, I now have a nice neat CSV file I can download in tabular format of the results. So each row represents an article in the search results page and I can see all the standard fields I showed you earlier, but in tabular format, I can easily import into Excel or into a database if I'm trying to do some bulk analysis. And it denormalizes everything. So I get the first resource here in every row. So if there's a PDF file, it will automatically show me that when I import the data and I get a link to the PDF file so I can download the full publication in PDF format. And here's what the file looks like in Excel, just the first 20 rows that we saw from the SERP API and we can see all the other fields that I showed you earlier. If you want to analyze the authors, scroll down and there's a separate collection that breaks out the authors because each paper can have one or more authors. So this has a row for each author and a reference to the parent article when you download the CSV file. So here on the left is a row for each author complete with their unique author ID I can use to keep track of, like if I'm putting this into a database. 
but on the right hand side, I get a reference to the article. So you'll see some repeats here for articles with more than one author. So for example, this article here has four authors, and when I scroll to the left, I can see their individual names row by row. And it does the same for resources. So if an article has more than one HTML or PDF link, I can get them all in this collection when I download the CSV file. And if you scroll down, you can see more advanced options like I mentioned earlier. If you wanna look up all the citations for a paper, you can plop in the cites ID here for that article. You can also look up the other versions and the cluster parameters set the language, tweak the query, change the search type if you need to do patents or other case law. Again, let me know in the comments. I don't wanna get into something that no one's interested in. And you can also specify the years here. As for pagination, just increase this by 20 as I showed you earlier to get the next page of results and so on. So here I can see the CSV file for the second page. It has different titles and I can download this as a separate CSV file. But if I don't wanna do that, I can use this workflow feature here and click import. I plop in my SERP API keyword asked and now I have the same parameters as before, but I can enter in multiple values per field. So I can enter one per line, like if I wanna do searches for coffee and beer, this is going to run a pagination loop for coffee and beer and combine them all together. So here I can see pagination will auto increment by 20 each time. If I want, I'm gonna set a limit of just doing one extra call for each search, just for demonstration purposes. But if you wanna get everything, leave this unlimited. Only caveat is that it may eat away at all of your SERP API credits for the month if you're on the free tier. Now the workflow is automatically querying SERP API and running the pagination loop for both of the queries and combines everything together. So here it started with beer, got the second page for beer, then went to the first page of coffee and got the second page of coffee. And I could have let this keep going until I got 10 or so pages of results. So I have a total of 80 results in my CSV output and you can see everything's combined together. I don't have a bunch of different CSV files for each query. And on the left, I can see when it switches to the coffee parameter, so I have a reference to know what's going on in all of this data. I also get the denormalized authors and resources I showed you earlier, where each row is an individual author or resource. So I hope you found this useful. Check out the links in the description so you can try these tools for yourself. Let me know in the comments your thoughts. What are you using Google Scholar API for? Do you need scraped data? And what are you using the data for so I can make more videos? Please subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching until the end. Check out this next video on the Google Trends API if you haven't already.